everybody's ready to go. It looks relatively still out there. There's some movement in the trees, but if, if Last Heat has anything to say about how this race is going to go, it's going to be a barn burner here in the electric forest. About 73 degrees out now, so the temperature has dropped a bit, and, uh, you know, conditions, as you said, seem pretty great for this hot window for tonight, the high-performance section of these races. We have entered the Saturday night hot window. The Thank Saturday you. night hot window. This is it. Got your tickets in the prize purse we saw on the screen. Is loading up, so that'll continue to calculate throughout uh, tomorrow as well. So what you saw on the screen is not what the athletes will be winning. They'll be winning more than that as more tickets are purchased headed into Sunday. So Katur, the Tokyo Olympian 817 runner, is at the front. Barraza on his outside shoulder and Mikulski on the inside as they head over the barrier right now. You know, we're about four and a half weeks out to the U.S. Outdoor Championships, which is also the national championships weekend globally now that the schedule has been kind of consolidated. Um, and ten and a half weeks till world champs. I was looking at some of the top contenders, and, um, you know, if you look at Barraza and Couture and Bastion, all of them have had about three-ish steeplechases by now. So they've all pretty much got a sense of, like, where they're at for the season. Now it's the fine-tuning. And so I think as opposed to, you know, four to six weeks ago where there were a bit of, maybe there were some, some surprises, people who ran faster than we expected, some who fell apart. Now these athletes should be pretty dialed in. And so, you know, the, from everything that the pace they set all the way till the end, um, and they're all going to be gearing up for these big championships ahead, trying to be there. So 69 seconds. Uh, the pace they're running right now, and you can see they're on the green lights, which is set at 829 pace. Katura out front, looking very comfortable. Then Barraza, and I like to see David Ribich in there too, wearing that blue uniform. He's a 1500 meter man, 335 guy, who's decided to test out, dip his toe into the steeplechase this year. And he's run 854, but we'll see what he can do tonight. But already Katur, not wanting to, sh not wanting to shy away from uh, Stepping on the gas early is doing so right now. It's, it's as though he just took a look behind him to see where the wave light was. Like, <laughs> am I on pace? Am I not on pace? Hey, light, help me out a little, help me out a little bit. Um, yeah, but Bernard Keeter out there in front. Again, he says he's taking these little glances down to, to see where the light is. Uh, Brian Barraza content to let Bernard Keeter take the lead out front. One of my favorite things about the steeplechase, uh, again, never ran it, but from what I heard from the competitors is you don't always need a rabbit. Like rabbits, yeah. now that you, especially now that you have wave lights, you're just always focused on get to the next barrier, get to the next right. barrier, get to the next barrier. So the event naturally breaks itself up mentally. Um, but really great to see some of the best of the best of American steeplechasers out here tonight in the Electric Forest. Well, and I think to your point also with the steeplechase, generally in a distance event over 800 meters, you can be at a disadvantage to be leading, except when it's a steeplechase and when you need that visual clearance to be able to get over the barrier without tripping and falling. And so there can be an advantage, as, as you mentioned, Will, to being out in front and leading and having that clear path throughout so you can pick your course in the race. So Couture taking matters into his own hands. He's got an 825 season best right now, but he's, oh, sorry, he has an 830 season best, but an 817 overall PB. And he's ranked 38th in the world currently. The steeplechase for the men with the unfortunate news of Hillary Bohr having a broken foot after the steeplechase in Rabat becomes probably the most wide open distance event uh, on the men's side at, in the U.S. And so I think Bernard Keeter right now is uh, trying to put his name firmly in one of those positions and fear into the hearts of his competitors. You know, we watched a, a great steeplechase in Los Angeles this past weekend with Ahmed Jaziri and Isaac Updike both running 8.17. Um, and so the gauntlet and, and, you know, hot on the heels of Hillary Boers, I forget what he had run in, in Rabat, but, but very quick. Um, and then to hear that he's out for four to six weeks with a broken foot, it's, it's gut-wrenching. You hate to see it, but it opens things wide up. And we haven't seen Jagger run a steeple this year. Um, so you got a lot of guys who are looking, licking their chops, thinking this is our year. Like, this is wide open. This is ours for the taking. 
Um, I love the story of Dan Mikulski, a guy who went to IU, uh, a, a Hoosier, a historic track and field program with the likes of Bob Kennedy and the Jefferson brothers, uh, being, being also graduates of that university. Um, and a couple years ago, you know, sort of recognizing that he had a great opportunity as well in this event and dropping huge personal bests, but all, doing all of it at domestic meets and really elevating the event and the other competitors that were racing with him to, to new heights. And both of these athletes being part of the WCAP program for the U.S., for, um, you know, the United States representing coming off Memorial Day weekend, especially poignant um, having these athletes, you know, represent our country in, in many ways. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always Army-Navy in the football game. That's the big one. But we got Army Air Force out here. Where are our <laughs> veterans? <laughs> Chip into the pot. Who's your favorite athlete? Yeah, there you go. Pump the money in. That's it. We see the pot climbing as the race progresses, too. And Keeter with two laps to go. He's right on the green lights. And he looks good. He does. He looks very good. In 2021, he waged an epic battle with Mason Fairlick in the Electric Forest, and Fairlick came out on top there. But it was for Bernard. It wasn't without Bernard Couture's heavy, uh, heavy pacing in the middle, and uh, threw some hard moves in the latter stages of that race that made the race. And they both came away uh, with personal bests: 818 and 819, I believe. For the fans wondering again, what that wave light pace is at for this race? The green wave lights are paced at 815 which is the world championship qualifying standard. Bernard Keeter firmly placing himself right smack dab in the middle of those lights. And what we are told is that the back light is paced at exactly 815.0. So as long as he's ahead of that last green light, he will be in contention to run a world championship qualifying standard. I think he's lost a little bit of ground mm -hmm. going over that barrier. Uh, he's getting a little tired here, but Come on, fans. Let's cheer Bernard <laughs> Keeter on. Go get that world standard, bud. The yeah, fans he was, are aware of it. He was right on it going into the last water jump, and I think that took a little bit out of him. He is looking a little bit fatigued as he tries to clear these um, barriers, but, you know, hopefully for him over this last lap, maybe he can kind of accelerate through each one of them. Yeah, he was, you know, firmly running those 68, 67s the last four or five laps, and that was a 69-9, so obviously – the effort creeping up on Bernard Keeter. He's going to run an enormous season's best. And what can he muster over the last 250 meters here as he negotiates his way down the back stretch and over these last few barriers? And just for in the race for second, uh, Mikulski had a slower last lap at 73, and Craig Huff is really coming on strong. He ran a 68 the last lap. He's just now coming up, trying to pass and take that second place pot spot. Mikulski is fighting him as Couture is up ahead, Cleared his last water jump. He's fallen quite behind the world standard, but still clearly Ooh. has the win for this race. Huff was maybe a little bit too big for his britches there, passing Mikulski and then struggling over that water barrier. But Huff looking for a U.S. qualifying time. Come on, Craig Ooh. Huff. Here comes Do it for the Aggies. Straight as well. He's finishing up. We'll see what the time is on the clock. 8.22.9. So that is a great time for Couture this season and qualifies him for USA's, which I don't believe he had the time previously. But Mikulski coming in second, 828, and Craig Huff. I think just possibly missing that USA qualifier by .03 of a second. Oh, gosh, that's rough. That's gutting. So Mikulski storming back after Craig Huff passed him over the water barrier and coming up for that second place spot. Don't mess with Army or Air Force. Air Force. <laughs> Don't mess with Air Force. <laughs> Don't mess with anybody. These steeplejerseys steeple are tough. And with that win by Bernard Couture, he has taken two Portland Track Festival steeple, or steeplechase crowns. So he's in rare company. I believe he is the only man to have taken two at this meet. 